The GeForce 5090 comes in a surprisingly robust feeling cardboard box within another surprisingly robust feeling cardboard box. There's a bit of a fiddly flap that you have to remove, so I think it's safe to say it's not going to accidentally fall out during transit or anything like that. And the card itself is remarkably normal looking. It has two fans that are visible from one direction, and then on the other, just a heatsink. Across the card are varying textures, smoothed edges, and subdued colours, and given it's only two slots thick, at almost two kilograms, it's surprisingly heavy for its size. More on that later. The design itself is very clever. The idea is that the fans can blow the air through the graphics card in a straight line, which makes them a lot more efficient. Previously, only the far fan could have done that, because the one closest to all the display ports was blocked by the graphics card itself. But this time around, the card bit of the graphics card is quite small and centrally positioned between the two fans. Which allows for air to pass through the card either side of it. You can see straight through the card in this slow motion replay just here. So yeah, this apparently allows for better cooling at higher power consumption levels than in previous generations of card. So there was a bit of drama last generation with the new 12 pin power connector. It was channeling a lot of electricity through a very small area, which meant it could potentially overheat if not connected properly or if bent by getting pressed against the side of your PC's case. So it looks like they've done two things to improve the 5090. For a start, the power connector is now sunken into the card somewhat and offered a bit of an angle. I think this makes it look neater, but more importantly means less of the connector, once plugged in, will stick out to potentially get snagged on the side of your case or whatever. Also, if you look at the old GeForce 4090 power cable, it's fairly stiff, but the 5090s is floppy and with loads of separate cables. Fluffykins loves it. This, again, helps it not to get smushed against the side of your PC's case, though I'm not sure it's possible to make it look neat inside your PC because no matter where I put these cables, it looked like my graphics card was being attacked by an octopus. But I'm fine with that, because that's my fetish. Now to compare its size with other graphics cards. This is a GeForce 4060 Ti, and it's 2.5 slots thick. So while maybe slightly thicker than the average graphics card, in other dimensions, it's about average. This giant chungus is the GeForce 4090 FE. I forgot how hefty this boy was when I was unscrewing it from my PC for this video, and it fell and hit my PSU with a worryingly loud thunk sound. If you've upgraded from this card to the 5090, then firstly, why? And second, the 5090 feels almost underwhelmingly small. It could have gone one of two ways in my mind. The other would have been, wow, it's awesome they've managed to cram more performance than the 4090 into something much smaller and more manageable. But yeah, this new one just looks tiny in comparison. I've actually had to prop up the support that I bought for the 4090 in order for it to reach the 5090 in my case. Why do I need a support, I hear you ask? Well. Let's have a look at how heavy these cards are. It's worth showing some normal graphics cards first, which were between 600 and 800 grams in weight. The 5090 is more than double that at over 1.8 kilograms. That's a lot of weight. And then the giant Alpha Chungus Edition 4090 is even more at 2.2 kilograms. That's like how many pounds are in a kilogram, but in kilograms. And it's over four times the weight of some other graphics cards. But all things considered, it surprises me even more that the 5090 is as heavy as it is, given that it's only half the thickness. These cards are solid chunks. You don't want all that resting on your motherboard. Get a support for them, and definitely don't let them fall and hit the PSU. And finally, here is the 5090 compared against everyday household items like a pen, a mouse, a table, a tin of spaghetti, and a tin of beans.